Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Hello again, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us for this Sunday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy. On uh, July 14th, there's going to be the uh, Alaska Aviation Weather Unit webpage is changing on that date, Friday, July 14th. Uh, so it'll be something different than what you're used to. So you want to uh, take a look at it and uh, you know, get a feel for the links and, you know, maps, PIREPS, TAFs, TAFs, terminal aviation forecasts, and all those sort of things. And uh, we appreciate the emails. Let us know what you think. And moving on to fire danger, still pretty high up here over the northern interior. Of course, more rain down south, so a lot less here into the uh, east, central eastern Tanana Valley to the border, but uh, just to the north there, pretty high. And uh, still high fire danger areas in the Copper River Basin. On to the satellite imagery from yesterday, you can see uh, dry weather, sunshine up there where the extreme fire danger is. Not a lot of precip uh, expected up in that area, but uh, there was uh, massive moisture. Pretty good rainfall here actually pulling westward with the uh, heaviest amounts coming across anywhere from a half inch or three quarters of an inch up to two inches of rain falling with that system as it passed on by with the heaviest amounts, of course, on the uh, upslope areas of the eastern ridges. And that uh, trailed back into the southeast coast here where surges of moisture continued to rotate north and northwestward into, across the panhandle with more moisture out to the west with low pressure. And then out in the Bering Sea, weak low pressure there. Uh, lots of clouds though covering just about all of the Bering Sea, breaking out a little bit up here towards St. Lawrence Island, uh, well actually to the south and then up toward the Bering Strait. And a front, frontal boundary right through here associated with the higher top clouds showing up as the brighter conditions across the Alaska Peninsula and then improving on back out to the west with uh, ADAC right on the edge of some clearing. And for today, that hasn't moved a whole lot here, the low pressure area right there, the front uh, suppressed along the south coast here, northern Bristol Bay due to the westward movement here of this moisture. You can see kind of uh, pushing it actually back down to the south and that area of precipitation pulling westward here and so uh, nice drier conditions across south central Alaska today. A few showers developing, but nothing to the extent we saw yesterday. Some sunshine up over the eastern interior, but a lot of clouds now from uh, Norton Sound, actually from this area of moisture all the way back up now across the Brooks Range and the North Slope and kind of on out to the Arctic coast with some breaks anywhere from Aliktok over to Aftasuk and maybe Wainwright this afternoon. And still the uh, panhandle clouds, rain, showers going on here, heaviest central northern areas starting to see some clearing come on shore to Prince of Wales Island with uh, some more clearing back to the northwest. It's kind of extensive there over the Gulf of Alaska on up into Prince William Sound. And for the uh, Kodiak Island zone, you had uh, some moisture sneaking down from the north here along with this uh, frontal moisture coming up from the south. So that made for a cloudy, damp day uh, for the Sunday today. And that'll probably continue into this evening. Otherwise, uh, weak frontal boundary right through here near Kodiak Island, mainly the south side there. Kind of a break in the precip between the two areas here with uh, decreasing showers. Cook in the Kenai Peninsula during the afternoon hours, the bulk of the moisture pulling westward here, beginning to take a turn to the southwest and will eventually drop on down. This low will pull eastward and it'll wrap back in and dissipate further overnight tonight and into early tomorrow. Otherwise, uh, some sunshine, thunderstorm activity, not all that great. Uh, some scattered, isolated stuff here over the extreme eastern interior, 40 mile country from possibly, possibly the Wrangells, more likely the eastern Alaska range on up uh, to the north there. The bulk of the uh, strikes over in the Yukon and Canada and uh, rain showers again for the panhandle and uh, looks like some breaks, as I mentioned, up along the central Arctic coast, but more clouds rolled into the north slope today. A few scattered showers developing across the uh, Brooks Range and to a lesser extent out toward the eastern Arctic coast. Showers, low clouds, fog, rain, drizzle, any one of the three or four there 
uh, from the Aleutians here, central Aleutians, back to the northwest, and then you can see the next uh, system, the outer rain shield with that, still southwest of Shimia today. That will uh, spread some rain and fog into the far western Aleutians, really slow going there, uh, start to get uh, increase in the winds a little bit, really just changing direction, turning southeast, scattered showers for the remainder of the Aleutians, uh, picking up uh, coverage there with that trough over the Fox Islands, and a uh, pretty wet night tonight for the Alaska Peninsula, but nothing heavy as far as the precipitation goes, just pretty persistent, low clouds, fog areas of IFR, definitely marginal conditions right up into the southwest interior, still that area of moisture right in through here, again, as this tracks eastward, this will pull back down to the south south and uh, dissipate, more clearing up over the interior, a few isolated showers, Alaska range mainly this evening, otherwise south central Alaska, Prince William Sound, Cook Inlet, dry, Manuska's the Sitna Valley northward, and then some lingering thunderstorms here along this uh, trough through the central interior, there from about the White Mountains up to roughly the latitude of Eagle. And then back to the northwest with some showers possible over the northwest interior. Pretty good, mostly cloudy, say maybe a little bit of clearing there for the Brooks Range and the Arctic Coast. Scattered to isolated showers, patchy fog to go along with it, mostly along and off the coast. Still showery across the southeast coast. Now we got this moisture trying to uh, work in streaming northeastward already, but uh, doesn't make that much progress for tomorrow. Brings a chance of rain or keeps a chance of rain in along the coast of Prince of Wales Island. Otherwise, uh, mostly cloudy, scattered showers from uh, Ketchikan and Net, Metlakatla, up into the uh, central part of the uh, Panhandle. Less than today, though. A little more in the way of showers up north there with the thunderstorm activity. It looks like it'll be mostly again in the Yukon, maybe a little bit more action here into the eastern interior and then back to the northwest along that trough with uh, increasing sunshine there. Also increasing easterly winds along the Arctic coast uh, with uh, small craft and brisk wind advisories coming into the forecast in areas up there for both uh, Monday and Tuesday especially on the east side here, looking at 25 to 30 knot winds for the next couple of days with uh, moisture chances, just a risk there for the uh, area from Point Lay down to uh, Point Hope. Uh, not Kivalina though, just mostly cloudy, maybe partly sunny, Kotzebue, Deering, and Buckland. And then a chance of moisture there, low clouds, fog, drizzle, possibly for Nome, St. Lawrence Island, the Bering Sea, high pressure, light winds, with a uh, very weak low just off the coast. They're really not producing much in the way of any type of uh, weather. Just uh, if it's inland a little bit, it'll keep that onshore gradient going, keep it more socked in around Nunavak Island uh, than it otherwise would be. And then scattered showers to the peninsula. Rain continuing here for Kodiak Island tomorrow as that low center tracks slowly near Sitkanak eastward. And uh, back up into maybe uh, Cook Inlet, some more moisture possibly coming back around with this system working in from the south. So that'll mostly be around the Anchor Point area down towards Seldovia, Iliamna, and Fognac Island. Otherwise, Prince William Sound partly sunny and uh, 25 knot wind associated with that warm front in the next system pushing eastward. And then for Tuesday, that streams eastward here as far as the moisture goes, southerly to southeast winds, 25 uh, knots or so into the uh, central Aleutians, light variable winds, with maybe partly to mostly sunny skies, be a little optimistic there for Unalaska and uh, light winds of the Pribilovs, probably socked in with fog there with IFR. And then the St. Lawrence Island area, same pattern with the low stuff along the coast. Northwest offshore flow here developing, so looking pretty good here for Cook Inlet and uh, Susitna, Manuska Valley, Kenai Peninsula, as well as Kodiak Island, warmer and sunshine with afternoon showers uh, developing, any one of which could develop into a thunderstorm, but that'll mostly be up over the eastern Tanana Valley and back up toward the eastern Brooks Range. Otherwise, back to the west, mostly sunny for the eastern north slope and gusty east winds, uh, kind of chilly there with low clouds and fog along much of the Arctic coast there. A little bit more offshore flow may, uh, will probably make for better conditions there from about uh, Point Lay on down to Point Hope. And the southeast coast here, still low pressure to the, south, to the west and southwest. Flow around that keeps sending surges of moisture one after the other, mostly in the form of showers and clouds, right in, uh, into the area, looks like through Tuesday. And temperatures down that way today, just all stuck in the 50s, lower to mid, and stepped upper 50s there, 57 over at Stewart, 58 up at Skagway. Otherwise, Petersburg, Wrangell, Klawak, all at 56, 53. Yakutat up to 63 there at Cordova. 
and uh, lower 60s with some clearing coming into the Sitna Valley, both at Palmer and Talkeetna, 62 over at Gulkana. Otherwise, uh, upper 50s there for Kenai and Homer, as well as Whittier and Seward. Tanana Valley, Fairbanks, 70 degrees, Eagle 77. 72 at Tanana and a 74 degree reading. Nice afternoon at Fort Yukon. Bettles right at 70. 63 and a Tuvik. And also there at Etchesuk, mid 40s, eastern Beaufort Sea coast to 57 there in a place formerly known as Barrow. And 53 over at Point Lay. Mid to upper 60s here over the northwest interior. Kivalina, 68 degrees. 65 Kotzebue Ambler, 69. And a 65 degree reading there at Nome and kind of a range here along the southwest coast, but all in the 60s, 61 Euclid, St. Michael 68, Amonic 62, near 64 uh, Macoriac and a 57 degree reading, both at Bethel and McGrath, Sparavon just 50 degrees this afternoon, and 49 there at Cape Newenham, near 50 on the average for the Privilofs, as well as the Central Aleutians, and Alaska 51 degrees, up to 59 though out at uh, Shimia, almost making 60, and uh, 50s for the Alaska Peninsula, the upper 50s there up into Bristol Bay. Lows for tonight, uh, pretty mild, 55 to 60 here from uh, the Kobuk Valley eastward, or even the Selawik Valley to the Yukon Flats. Upper 30s, Central Arctic Coast, 40s south of the mountains there, Copper River Basin, South Central Alaska. Kind of a cool night coming up, uh, a little cooler with uh, upper 40s, lower 50s for the Panhandle. And then for the highs tomorrow, 60s, lower 60s, Copper River Basin, mid 60s, maybe a little more sunshine here for Cook Inlet, the Kenai Peninsula, and the Madnuska Susitna Valley. No change, 75 to 82 up here over the northeast interior, near 70 back to the southwest, into the 60s again for the deltas, upper 50s. Hard, hard being a hard time reaching 60 there in the Panhandle, as well as the Aleutians. Tomorrow morning, IFR. Sneaking up the east side of Kodiak Island there to Fognac Island with uh, marginal into the Barrens. Some uh, early morning IFR, Western Prince William Sound, marginal VFR in areas down across the southeast coast. And of course, a huge area of IFR out to the west. And for the uh, afternoon flying weather, areas of marginal VFR from the Alaska Range to the Talkeetnas along the North Gulf Coast and the Panhandle. Otherwise, IFR to a lesser extent on the Arctic coast there and a patch here over the southeast bearing, more widespread IFR farther out west. And the and Agon, another day of VFR through the pass there, both passes, either approach. Lake Clark and Merrill, good VFR tomorrow. And for rainy, VFR as well. Windy VFR, but becoming marginal VFR as uh, clouds build and some moisture rolls back in. Isabel, same forecast. Uh, kind of deteriorating conditions in the afternoon for Isabel Mentasta. It could be even worse starting out VFR, but then could go IFR by mid and late afternoon. And then for Tanita, VFR and Portage also looking good. Again, uh, could be some marginal to possible IFR in the morning, then becoming VFR. Uh, but it'll be VFR for most of the day there for Portage. Otherwise, chill, coot, and white occasionally marginal. Freezing levels, cool air aloft now, 4,000 feet here over south central Alaska. And another uh, pocket there over the Panhandle. Warmer, 10,000 foot plus there over the northern interior and out over the western bearing. Icing above about 8,000 here uh, from Kodiak Island along the southwest coast and Bristol Bay. And over the southeast coast here, uh, mostly central and northern areas into the Wrangell Mountains. Another patch up there over the eastern interior. And then a new batch entering the picture out here to the west with the next system. And for the winds aloft, jet stream uh, to the south here, upper level low coming eastward with that system toward Kodiak. Southwest flow continues into the Panhandle. That center actually should be down a little bit farther south there. Easterly flow 80 knots up around the upper level high and the warm air aloft, keeping the temperatures in the lower 80s up over the northeast interior. 9,000 feet easterly is mostly off the coast here, 20 to 25, and even that not much that strong. Lighter over the interior. 5 to 15, 25 knot easterlies now along much of the Arctic coast turning north, only at about 20 knots down across the Alaska Peninsula and Fox Islands, 35 knot winds coming with the next system over the western Aleutians. Easterlies again right along the coast here, only 10 to 15, panhandle as well with a little bit stronger across the Gulf of Alaska toward Kodiak, but only 20 to 25, 25 to uh, 20 to 25, St. Lawrence Island, maybe 30 knots of Bering Strait and a little brisker there for the Arctic coast here at 3,000 feet, 25 to 30 knots there along the coast and to the north, much lighter, more variable here through the interior, and then southerlies, 20 to 30 knots coming in from about Amchitka westward. And for turbulence with that, uh, areas of light to very isolated moderate chop, barren islands there, Fognac Island to Kamishak Bay, 
lee side along in uh, south of the Alaska Peninsula. Areas of up there over the north slope in the Arctic coast with those gusty east winds and then with the increasing winds over the western central Aleutians. And after the break, I'll be back with the marine forecasts. Working. Traveling or playing on the water is a way of life for Alaskans. But Alaska's cold water and harsh conditions can quickly turn any boating trip into a life-threatening emergency. Unlike marine mammals with their natural insulation and buoyancy, humans can't survive in Alaska's water without additional flotation and protection from the cold. This is just a drill. Get your suits. In an emergency, seconds can make the difference between life and death. Mayday, mayday, Practice mayday. the steps to correctly don an emergency suit before you leave the dock. Suit, Everyone on board should be able to don their emergency suit in less than 60 seconds. I've got the lid. Yeah, I got the suit. Remove the emergency suit with a quick downward shake of the bag. If the snaps have been well maintained, they should open easily. Roll the suit out on the deck and sit down on the chest area near the head. Sitting on the suit makes you much more stable and eliminates the chance of falling and injuring yourself if the vessel moves suddenly or rolls. Put your feet in and slide them all the way to the bottom of the legs. Placing plastic bags over your boots helps your feet slip into the legs much faster and allows you to keep your boots on. The bags can be stored in the legs of the suit or in the hood for easy access. Be aware that some brands of emergency suits have tapered legs and require boots or shoes to be removed before donning the suit. Once your feet are in the bottom of the emergency suit legs, kneel or stand and bring the suit over your back. Put your weaker arm in first. If you're right-handed, put your left arm in the left sleeve. With your right hand, secure the hood over your head. Without the hood securely in place, you can drown or be washed out of your suit in rough seas. Sweatshirt hoods and hats can interfere with the immersion suit hood. Tuck your sweatshirt hood into your collar before donning. Remove your hat before putting the immersion suit hood on. If you wear eyeglasses, consider placing them in your shirt pocket or inside the suit to prevent loss or injury. Finally, place your right hand into the right sleeve. Make sure the zipper is clear. With one hand, hold the bottom of the zipper down and grab the toggle with the other hand. Arch your back and zip the suit all the way up. If any snags are felt, do not force them. Instead, lower the zipper to clear the snag and try again. A long, steady pull is more effective than stopping and starting. Pull the face flap across the top of the zipper and fasten in place. With practice, immersion suit donning can be accomplished with speed and efficiency. Once you are in your immersion suit, turn to help others. Working together, two people can quickly help a third person get into their immersion suit by the following technique. Have the suit open on deck and ready for the person. Place plastic bags on the person's feet and guide them into the suit. Once their legs are fully in the suit, have the person roll onto their knees, guide their arms into the suit, and place the hood securely on their head. Hold the bottom of the zipper down with one hand, grasp the toggle, and zip the immersion suit closed with the other hand. With practice, immersion suits can be done in this manner in less than 20 seconds. You should abandon ship only after determining that being on board the vessel is more dangerous than being in the water. Always enter the water slowly and from the lowest point possible. This allows the body to adjust to the new water environment and minimizes the chance of injury. On some vessels, easing yourself slowly into the water is not an option. If you must jump, make sure the flotation collar is deflated. This will prevent injury to your neck and back or damage to the suit. Stand next to the side of the vessel, face the bow or the stern. Protect your head from hitting the side of the vessel by covering it with your inboard arm. This will also prevent the immersion suit hood from slipping off when you enter the water. Use your remaining hand to create an opening at the neck that will allow air to escape as you enter the water. 
This will prevent your eardrums from being damaged or ruptured. With the hand of the outboard arm, protect the airway to help keep water out during an involuntary gasp. Look over the side to ensure the area is clear. Step sideways off the vessel, crossing your ankles to prevent straddling unseen objects in the water. Once in the water, float on your back. The immersion seat's pillow or a flotation collar helps you maintain this position. Forming a human chain while swimming allows you to move faster, stay together, and creates a bigger target for rescuers to see. Three or more people can form a human raft. This technique not only creates a bigger target for rescuers, it allows the group to support someone in worse condition and keep them out of the water. When trying to attract the attention of nearby rescuers, you can also lock elbows shoulder to shoulder and kick your feet. The splashing will significantly increase your visibility, especially on a calm day. You never know how your day is going to end. Immersion suits have saved thousands of lives, but an immersion suit will work only if it is properly sized, donned, maintained, stowed, and used the right way. When an emergency happens on board a vessel, seconds count. Southeast winds coming up to 25 knots on the south coast with that uh, front coming in in the afternoon, see 6 to 7 feet. Much lighter up to the north, uh, falling back to 10 knots. And for Lynn Canal, northern Lynn Canal, south 25 in the afternoon, 15 Stevens Passage, Clarence Strait, southeast 20, 4 foot seas. And no change in that zone in the forecast for Tuesday, southeast 15 for Stevens Passage, bring it down to 20 knots under small craft advisors to Lynn Canal. And uh, 20 to 25 knot winds here. Southerlies at 20 on the south coast. Got a zone right through here of about 25 knot small craft advisory winds. And then east or east northeast, 20 knots with 8 foot seas up to the north. So actually, small craft advisory is the entire stretch of the coastline due to the 8 foot seas. And for Prince William Sound, variable at 10. Same forecast for the eastern north Gulf Coast. And pick up easterlies at 15 to about 20 knots for the Barren Islands and Kachemak Bay. South 20, east side of Kodiak Island, northeast 25, Shelikoff Strait, light and variable for Cook Inlet. And Tuesday, south to southwest, uh, Cook Inlet about 15, southwest 10, staying life for Prince William Sound. Variable winds continue eastern north Gulf Coast. West 15, pick up to 25 knots for the Barren Islands with five foot seas. Northeast, northwest 25 for Kachemak Bay, as well as along the east side of Kodiak. And for Bristol Bay, east at 20, swinging around to the northwest at 15 there on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula. Southwesterly is 15 to 20 there from Cape Sarachev on up to Sitkanak. Tuesday, west 15, Bristol Bay Peninsula down to Cape Sarachev and Cape Sarachev eastward there to Castle Cape and then northwest at 20 on up to Sitkanak. Eastern Aleutians, uh, 15 to 20 knot westerlies tomorrow with seas running 4 to 8 feet. Uh, laid down pretty good here, about 15 from the southwest. Central Aleutians, then west of ADAC, small craft advisors in the next system coming in, south to southeast, 25, 6 to 7 foot uh, seas. Even stronger the next day, we've got 30 knot winds there from Shimia, all the way over to Atka Island in the forecast from the southeast, seas 6 to 11 feet, uh, highest out west. And then light variable winds for Unalaska Island in the forecast for Thursday. Just two to four foot seas there. And then from roughly Nikolsky westward, uh, pick it up again, 20 to 30 knot winds, uh, especially as you get over toward ADAC with building seas. And for the uh, southwest coast, we've got southern Nunavak Island, only 10 knots from the northwest, but north of the island, 
20 knots and St. Lawrence Island small craft advisories, north winds 25, five foot seas, light winds for the Pervilofs, and that uh, becomes light and variable on Tuesday. So a couple of light wind days there, so probably a lot of low clouds and fog. Light and variable Nunavak Island, west 10. Uh, really the southwest coast is variable at 10, south 20 for St. Matthew Island, but north 10 for St. Lawrence Island. Eastern uh, Beaufort Sea coast, uh, Looks like east northeast at 25 tomorrow. Central coast about 20 knots, four foot seas, eight foot seas here on that eastern zone. And then northeast on the west side at 25, turn northerly there from Cape Thompson or Cape Beaufort down to Wales, 25 knots, six foot seas. And then even uh, stronger winds uh, here on the west side, 30 knots out of the east in the forecast with uh, small craft advisories. The entire stretch of the coastline here from demarcation point out of the uh, east all the way around and then turning northeast there from uh, Cape uh, Beaufort to Cape Thompson, and then light westerlies there for Cotsby Sound. For tonight, showers continue here over the southeast coast, uh, in spite of the high pressure there near the coast, and some scattered thunderstorms along the trough in the interior. Either side of that, not too bad, uh, partly cloudy skies to mostly cloudy to rain here over the southwest interior, but in a decreasing mode there as moisture slips on up into Kodiak Island, stays damp with a couple of troughs in the low center over the Alaska Peninsula, and then for the uh, tomorrow forecast, thunderstorms isolated throughout the day here along the trough eastern interior. Sunshine, more of it over south central Alaska, but uh, chance of rain down the inlet in the southern Kenai with uh, showers again for the Panhandle. More rain poised to move in as that front approaches. Increasing wind and rain out west. Another wet day for Tuesday here for the southeast coast. Scattered showers, isolated thunderstorms here, but uh, not bad. Copper River Basin, South Central Alaska, sunny and warm though for the remainder of the interior. More wind and rain out over the central and western Aleutians. Otherwise, the uh, high pressure ridge here keeping it uh, dry and light winds through. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.